And that was a great track called Who Stole My Radio from a great vocalist, and she's a standout singer. She's uh, getting ready to go back out on tour in support of her standout release on Alligator Records called The Soul Truth. She'll be hitting our area at B.B. King's in New York City and also in Hartford at the Wadsworth Museum. And uh, we welcome to the Up Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF, Shamika Copeland. How you doing, Shamika? I'm doing great. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, and I, I guess you're resting up for a, for a big tour coming up, uh, another leg of the Soul Truth Tour. Yeah, I've actually been doing my Christmas shopping, so when I come home, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> well, you moved uh, out to Chicago, right? One of the homes of the blues, right? Yep, I'm in Chicago now. How, how you like it out there? I love it. It's really, really great. You know, um, a lot of music here, a lot of good food, and... You know, it's just a great city. And, and we played Who Stole My Radio, which was uh, a great smash right off the bat off the Soul Truth record. Um, you do radio yourself, right? I do. I have a radio show on Sirius Satellite Radio. Okay. Um, it airs every Saturday from 12 to 6 o'clock. And I'm having a real good time. Uh, of course, I had no DJ experience at all. That's all right. Most of us jump right in something really new for me but um everybody there has been really great helping me out and stuff and uh <clears throat> it's been really cool so i'm totally digging it so, so g give us the format on, on the show do you, do you interview people you play a lot of a lot of your own music i mean that you you know in fact you were talking about ronnie baker brooks so far the only interview that i've done is with ronnie baker brooks oh okay yeah on my show right yeah, we just uh, we're hanging out with Ronnie here in Hartford, which you'll be uh, playing Saturday night uh, at the Wadsworth and Athenium Museum, which is uh, 600 Main Street downtown there. So, have you played Hartford before? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, Probably Black Eyes. Concept of days and time, so you have to forgive me, but I've definitely been there. <laughs> Well, well, most musicians that uh, do a lot of gigs don't, so that's cool. You're out there working, so yeah. Now, uh, the Soulful Truth, uh, the big part of the record is that you went down and recorded with uh, Steve Cropper and all the great musicians out in Memphis. How, how did you choose that, and what was it like working with Steve? Oh, uh, Steve was just amazing to work with. I mean, so much energy and so much, you know, information to give. I I've worked with some great people, Dr. John, and it was the same way. You know, they just have so many years of experience behind them that... You know, <clears throat> you just get to suck out all of their energy and stuff and play it fast. How long was the recording process for you out there? I'm sorry? H how long did it take to record the record for you? Well, I guess w we did it, um, you know, one week at a time. So I guess if you put it all together, it took probably about four, four weeks maybe, something like that. Right. You can imagine, you know, trying to get all of our schedules together. How oh, yeah. difficult that was to get everybody all in the same place at the same time. But we made it happen. Uh, for our listeners, they can uh, right now go to Shamika Copeland's website, which is, uh, I'll give the spelling, S-H-E-M-E-K-I-A-C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D.com. And she'll be appearing uh, this Wednesday at B.B. King's Blues Club right in Manhattan, 42nd Street, Go to bbkingblues.com, and, and you've played there before, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, several times. That's always fun, because I'm from New York City, so I got a lot of family and a lot of friends, so it's a, it's a good gig out there. You going out uh, a day or two early to hang out with your family? No. Oh. Um, right after I do this, this run, this short run that we're doing, it'll be Thanksgiving, so I'll be home with them. So, um... After I do this, I'll be able to spend time with them, but I'm not going in early, no. Well, I mean, uh, your your family, you mentioned growing up in Harlem, and uh, what a great place. And, uh, of course, your father, the, the legendary Johnny Clyde Copeland. Um, what was your first introduction into uh, singing, and when, when, when did the light go on that this was going to be your chosen field? Uh, it was later on in my life, I mean... I started out, I, I loved to sing because I had music in my house at all times. My father would be sitting around with a guitar and just playing, 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 and I'd be singing along. 
And then, um, I guess it was, I was probably about 16 or 17 years old before I realized that this is what I wanted to do for my living, because I sure didn't. You know, I thought it was insane traveling all over the place and never being home and and standing and letting and standing in front of a group of people and letting them watch you. <laughs> that whole idea was crazy to me. So um, it took some time. Now you mentioned touring on the road. I mean, this is you're doing some spot dates here, but you're playing five straight nights in different states. And and I know for a fact that you pour out every ounce of, of your soul into your voice on stage. How do, how do you keep it all together for five straight gigs in a row? I just pray. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. I pray and try to get a lot of rest. Uh-huh. And, you know, I don't abuse my body at any at any time, you know. Right. No cigarettes, no drinking, no cream. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no nothing. So, um, you know, that's, a, that's the only way to preserve your pipes and keep them together. Uh, additional dates this week, November 16th in Cambridge, Mass. at the Regatta Bar, then the 17th at the Grand Ellsworth, Maine, and then uh, November 18th right here in Harford, which is about 45 minutes away from our studios at the Wadsworth Athenium Museum. You can go to tickets and get them at HartfordJazzSociety.com and ShamikaCopeland.com to get all her CDs. And uh, we're going to play something off the Soulful Truth once again, the soul truth, and uh, this is a collaboration with a guy who we know from years past, Mr. Doby Gray. But you know, you're working uh, with one of the legends again in this uh, track called "Use." How how did you guys hook up with Doby? Well, of course, I I knew of Doby, but I didn't know him. And of course, he was good friends with Steve, and he called him up and he said, "Sure, I don't mind coming in and singing," and and it was cool. He just came in and he was perfect. All right, we'll give a listen to it right now. A duet between Shamika Copeland and Dobie Gray off the Soul Truth. This is called Used, and you're listening to WVOF and the Up. That was Shamika Copeland featured singing with Dobie Gray on her latest album on Alligator Records, The Soul Truth, the track called Used. Uh, Shamika, you have a standout band. In fact, we play uh, Jeremy Bond's solo records on our show um, a lot here, too. Tell, tell us about some of the cats in your band. Well, Jeremy Baum, of course, is a keyboard player. He's really amazing. Um, He just uh, sounds fantastic on this gig. And um, I've known him for a while because he did some gigs. The keyboard player that I had before wasn't able to do some gigs, and Jeremy came and filled in. So we were used to working with him, and then, you know, he came in and did the gig, and he was great. And then I have Arthur Nielsen, who's been with me since the beginning, almost nine years. And, um, holy crap. And then I have uh, Damon Dwight, who used to play drums with my father. I've known him since I was like six years old because of it. And then there's um, Kevin Jenkins, who's played with everybody you can think of. Just, you know, everybody. <laughs> and he's an amazing bass player. So the band is really doing great and um, we enjoy playing with each other so it's a lot of fun now now from your catalog of records um how how about the song selection into your current concert set list you playing a lot of stuff off the new record i do i play stuff off all the records um (laughs) it's so it's so hard because i remember when i put out my first album not having enough songs and now i have so many i can't do them all and you're still real young, so can imagine it's it's going to get tougher twenty years down the road. I know twenty years, <laughs> twenty years from now, I will definitely have um, an, another uh, group of songs that I'll be trying to remember. <laughs> right, right. Now, now uh, talking about growing up in Harlem, did you ever sing at the Apollo Theater? Get a chance? No, I went to the Apollo Theater a whole lot to see artists, but. Uh, I never actually performed on that stage. Right. That's something to do. I hope you get a chance. Maybe so. Maybe one of these days. Right. Oh, what were you listening to uh, back as a kid? And then uh, how about when you go out on the road? What do you guys listen to? We listen to everything out on the road. I mean, we, we definitely, all of us, uh, got, you know, of course, the iPod thing is so big now. So we all have thousands and thousands of songs to listen to. And we listen to 
um, everything from blues to jazz to, you know, African music, all sorts of kind of stuff in the band. Uh, there's a lot of other great artists. I noticed uh, a good friend, the teacher, Reggie Wooten from Nashville, came up and did some work on your record. How'd, how'd you work with Reggie? It was great. You know, it's amazing that these guys are so down to earth and cool and, and just easy to work with. Do you have, uh, I mean, you've already, in uh, the, the span of what, 10 years, 11 years of recording? work with uh, some great people and you're a legend in your own right but uh, how about a wish list unlimited budget who who would you bring on to another record um, I'd, I'd like to sing with Bonnie Raitt uh -huh. you know because she and I have such different sounds and different voices I would love to put something like that together see what it sounded like um, gosh there's so many there's so many I've ha I haven't worked I haven't done any work on a record with B.B. King I'd like to work with him also um, I wouldn't be too upset about doing a record with the Rolling Stones oh yeah <laughs> Spe speaking of uh, Chuck Lavelle right yeah um, oh yeah and we've got actually that was the next song we we're gonna play uh, you can't have that bringing the funk and, and uh, blues together right there you know it's just great music without classification I guess that's what I like to call it, just great music. Right. So uh, we'll listen to this right now from Shamika Copeland, The Soul Truth. This is called You Can't Have That, The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. We'll be back one more time. With